Dear brothers and sisters, saying the saints in Christ, welcome to an episode. This is our second episode in our series, uh, uh, answering the fiery preacher. Uh, why there is uh, uh, icons and the statues in Christianity, which is not true at all. And uh, as we've seen in the previous episode, there is a KO. Has Moses understood it the way you understand it now? Of course not. So you have no leg to stand on. You have no uh, uh, just any justification to say what you say. All right. I, again, the link of the video of uh, the fire preacher will be in the description. So if you'd like to see the whole thing. All right. In this episode, actually, will be a special episode in the sense uh, the fire preacher came with an idea which none of the fathers, like the olden ones or the new ones, said it. But I think it is uh, an inspiration by Jibreel alayhi salam because he believes in, uh, in three heavenly religions. What did he say actually which I'm exposing today and uh, uh, would like you to, un to understand. He claimed in his episode that for the pagans to prove that the church is not actually worshiping idols, he said the pagans have only one shape for their God. The statue is only one shape. But, this is what he said, uh, in the church we have different uh, pictures or icons, every one uh, resembling or pointing to something. And they gave an example with St. Mary. So, for example, he said, there is a picture for St. Mary, for example, uh, when uh, the angel came like, to preach here the good news. And he said, there is another picture or another icon, like she, she carries Lord Jesus, or, or baby Jesus, by the way. Uh, and another one, for example, for like, if, uh, the flight to Egypt, for example. All right? So he would like to say, as long as there are different in shapes, and every shape has a different meaning, this is not paganism. But paganism, only one shape. And he said, pagans have only one shape for their God, all right? That's why they are pagans, but who are not because it has different, different shapes, okay? We'll see if this is true or not true, unfortunately, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> did, from where did he get this? All right, all right, so we'll talk about Buddha, all right? First of all, by the way, his name, Buddha, is not actually his name, Buddha means uh, the awakened one, like the one has like full in, like enlightenment. But his name by birth is Siddha, Siddhartha Gautama. All right. Buddha had plenty of different positions, and each position position has a different meaning, by the way. All right. So there are plenty. But because uh, the fiery preacher believes in seven sacraments, so I, ch I decided to choose seven different positions for Buddha, all right, and explain each one, especially there is one, I have a story about him, all right, I, a, a real story, okay, uh, all right, so we'll, we'll come to this now. So, there is, for example, Buddha sitting, closing eyes, both hands on his lap, like sort of relaxing, this means what? Uh, like meditation serenity so you can put it this way or pray to him to get like calmness something like that there is another one buddha uh, sitting and his left hand on his lap and his right hand like that this means what protection so you can get one like this put it like in your car for example or put it at the front door of your of your uh, of your house uh, to protect you from anything all right uh, Number three, there is also Buddha, the beggar. Uh, number four, Buddha, the doctor or the chemist. So when you have a sickness, you can pray to this, like seeking like uh, uh, to be healed from whatever. Uh, there is also one Buddha, the teacher. There is also one Buddha, the walking one which means it, uh, representing his journey to nirvana, which means enlightenment, or he is coming from a place where he gave a speech, all right? Number seven, uh, the ocean repelling one, which Buddha 
with two hands like that. So protection is only one hand and sitting so it's more relaxed but this one is standing as like that. So they call it ocean repelling like ah and they have a story of this one. All right. So let's so these seven ones were out. Now I have a story with the uh, ocean repelling one. All right. About eight, nine years ago, uh, I was in Thailand with my wife and we went, went there a few times. Anyway, uh, one of the things that you can't miss when, if you go to Thailand, the uh, ocean trips, all right? Uh, ocean trips, there is big boat and small boat. We see them on, on, on the screen. Big boat, you can see, it's more stable like on the journey. Of course, it's uh, an, an, uh, like slow. Uh, you enjoy the sun, you enjoy the weather, you enjoy everything, all right? Anyway. Normally we use this one, but there is also something called a speed boat. It's a very small one. Look at the, the like the screen. It is a very small one, and watch that there is also uh, there are some uh, arrows and where the two engines. Are, because I'll speak to you about those two engines later. The amount of people is very limited as well as you can see. All right. Uh, one day we tried it. Like we said, well, let's try the uh, speed boat. Uh, the weather forecast said it could be some like winds and and the storms, but actually we saw sun is good in the morning, so we decided okay, let's give it a go. All right, so we went there. I was sitting very close to the engines, by the way. All right, the engines, each engine, one of the people like, of the crew is there to manage some some stuff, but I was like, like next to them up. All right. We just, uh, we are off, say about half an hour later, so everywhere just water, you cannot see any like uh, island, anything, nothing, nothing at all, only water. And actually a storm started, it was a savage storm. The uh, up and down in the boat, the speed boat was also like going like that and raining. And I could see waves coming a lot higher than the boat. I would say it could be like two and a half meters, three meters, the wave coming like a wall just coming towards it. And just to go up and down, people throwing out, or th throw, throwing up. Kids, we were uh, not very many, we were like a, about like, could be 10, 12 people plus the crew. Uh, they put, gave us like the uh, life jackets, but with those uh, like waves in the middle of nowhere, you will go nowhere. Uh, then actually, yes, I, I said, I don't think that will make it. It was a big mistake. Uh, my hands, because I, I was hanging like that because of the move, the, until just uh, like, uh, everything numb, no one speaking at all. So it was like, we just were hearing and we bang, and everything had bang like that, oh my goodness. Now the ship or the, 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 the boat will be like in two halves or anything like that. But the people actually running the, the, the motors or the engines, uh, they speak, no problems. <laughs> Although water coming everywhere, but no problem. And I could see the guys going like that, like that, yeah. Anyway, longest and uh, most terrified 20 minutes of my life. And my wife's life as well. Uh, after that, sun came out and everything was all right. An island, we reached an island, we relaxed there. Anyway, praise God, we came back because we still a mission ahead of me. Uh, when we reached like the land and just as we came out and we put our like our feet on the land, uh, while I was like uh, like going towards the uh, the buses to take us back to our hotels. Uh, one of the crew was like uh, next to me by accident. Then I asked him this question. A young man could be in young, y y like in his twenties. I asked him, "Did it happen that we ha you had like or you heard about a situation similar to what we had, and actually the boat was like broken and people, some died, some not, doesn't matter, but or all died." Then the guy told me the following. He had like sort of a necklace that made like from like fire, like not metal. But after I spoke to him he, and he got at the end of it like an, a small metal icon and he just lifted like that and said, no, 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 no. Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. <laughs> like Buddha be, is repelling the ocean. Uh, 
and I said to my wife, we have some, if we have someone talks with us now, could be someone said, Ma Mary, 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 St. George, St. George, St. George, or Shafi'i uh, al-Mustahilat, or anything like that, which is terribly bad. All right? So, those people, they believe that Buddha protects them uh, from the, uh, from like, this is like, this is stuff or, in the ocean. So, now, uh, compared to uh, the Orthodox, I would say that actually that the Buddhist people, like they trust Buddha in everything more than the Orthodox trust Jesus, because they say Jesus has only uh, this Shafa'a Kafariya, like the forgiveness uh, intercession, and after that we don't need him anymore. That's it, finished. Meanwhile for everything that they need, they make up their own intercessor. Like, if you lose something, there's ambiguous. If there is uh, a certain uh, uh, sickness, they, they make their own uh, intercessor for that. And they list, like, could be like about three, four hundred different intercessors for different uh, needs. And Jesus uh, just put like on the shelf, like uh, they put him into retirement. While the Buddhist actually, they put all their trust of, of everything in only one person. So actually they are more honorable people, more loyal to their God than the Orthodox. By the way, uh, like Buddhist and the Hindu, uh, they believe in the God that we believe in, Yahweh, but they don't know his name, they don't know his characters, because he did not reveal himself to them, like what happened to us. Because uh, uh, as we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 and also in the book of John as well that uh, God in the very beginning spoke to people through the prophets as in the Old Testament but in the New Testament he revealed or spoke to us through his son we had this revelation but those people they didn't but they believe in something they call it because I spoke to some they call it the high reality or the supreme being so even they give him a name even higher than God, in their like in in their terminology. So because they believe that this universe was created by someone or some power, that they can't they cannot realize it. They cannot they did not discover it like that at all. But they believe that there is something behind uh, the universe. They call it the high reality or the supreme being. So uh, our vision about them that they don't know God or not. Yes, they don't know God, but they believe there is something higher than anything. All right. So I would respect that for them until they know like the true God. All right. Because just, uh, just we are not uh, saying the truth about them when we uh, describe them as they don't know God. Yes, they don't know God because uh, they did not discover him yet, but they believe in a creator that they don't know. But, but they give him such a great title, the high reality or the supreme being. Uh, so as so far, so what the fiery preacher said is not true at all. What Orthodox are doing compared to what uh, the Buddhists are doing, actually the, the, the Buddhists are more loyal to Buddha, a lot, a lot more than the Orthodox to Jesus, or even to their saints, too many. The other ones, they have one, and this one is enough for them. So actually, I would respect them more than those guys. All right? To the best of their knowledge, by the way. Okay. Now, let's come to a second point. Second point about consecration. I noticed actually consecration in both paganism and the Orthodox are identical. Wow, really? Yes. I'll read you one of the definitions that you can uh, get on the internet. I'll put the link in the description. What is meant by consecration? Before this consecration ritual is performed, it is believed that the statue, the idol, or the image of a god is inert. I-N-E-R-T, in case if you didn't get it because of my accent. Not inhabitant not inhabitant or visited by the subject God's presence. 
Well, after it is done, the consecration rituals, it is believed that the God or the spirit of this God now personally inhibits the statue or the idol or the image on some level or at least at least will now accept the prayers directed towards the statue in chinese it is often metaphorically referred to as opening the eyes of the statue orthodox actually when they consecrate the icons they have exactly the same thing I, I would say they adopted it from paganism because paganism was before christianity to prove this we will watch now a short clip to pop Tadros consecrating some churches uh, altars and the icons of course and he will mention what is the difference between a photo and an icon he will, say, he, he will say the following. A photo is just like some wood, some papers, some uh, uh, colors, all right? This is a picture. And he said, when we consecrated and uh, anointed with the Holy Spirit, he says now it is an icon, not a picture. And he said, he will say exactly as you will see, but it's in Arabic, of course. He will say now, the Holy Spirit is inhibiting, is dwelling into the icon and now you can take blessing from it also watch that he will mention also that he consecrated some different altars of course made of some sort of stone whether marble granite or whatever uh, could be from wooden uh, stuff uh, and also they believe that the holy spirit will like dwell in it all right so let's watch this and come back again خلصنا كده تدشين المذبح وطبعا تدشين المذبح ده بيجعل الكنيسة كنيسة ثابتة ومذبح قائم وصلواتنا تترفع عليه ونذكر أسماء كل أحبائنا اللي في أي موضوع سواء مرضى أو سواء ضيقة أو سواء شدة أو سواء دراسة أو امتحانات أو سواء أي مشكلات أو سواء إخواتنا اللي راحوا السماء المذبح بنذكر عليه كل هذه الأسماء مبروك عليكم هنبتدي ندرش دلوقتي أيقونات الكنيسة أيقونات الكنيسة عبارة عن صور الصورة صورة عادية لكن الأيقونة معناها أنها مدشنة بزيت الميرون معناها بزيت الميرون رمز للروح القدس يعني الروح القدس يسكن في هذه الأيقونة يبقى أنت لما تدخل الكنيسة وتاخد بركة من الأيقونة بتاخد بركة الروح القدس واخدين بالكم فاحنا هندشن الأيقونات اللي هي في استطاعتنا دلوقتي اللي نطولها يعني وبعد كده ربنا يدي فرصة لما ندشن الأيقونات العالية مش كده العالية اللي هي عايزة سلالم وعايزة اسفنجة تكون عالية نعمل واحنا بندشن انتوا بقى بتقولوا تماجيد وهتنيات للقديسين دول كله تفضل كل اباء نشترك ويا بعض alright I hope that you could get something but I already explained it he said icon is the picture plus the holy spirit dwells in it and the same with the uh, what is it with the uh, 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 the altars okay now you might tell me brother Sammy but similarity doesn't mean actually it is paganism now I show you now it is paganism 100% and actually it is even more than that it is a grave mistake a grave sin against the Holy Spirit oh brother Sammy don't make it such a big thing why it is doesn't look like that no it is a very big thing it's it is a very big thing and it is a very big sin against the holy spirit as well how 800 years before christ there is uh, a prophet named joel some people they love to call him the pentecostal prophet in he got a, 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 a small book is one of the minor prophets in his second uh, chapter in his book he says the following and it shall come to pass afterward 
that I will pour out my spirit in on all flesh, not the stones, uh, not the wooden stuff, not the metal metal stuff, on all flesh. Your sons, and we will see now the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Has this prophecy been fulfilled? Yes. In the book of Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit descended on the assembled church at that time, and they start even speaking in tongues, and people thought they were, they were like uh, uh, drunk. St. Peter stood and said what? For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Wow, really? Yes, now, this is the Holy Spirit. But not Jibreel uh, giving some ideas false ideas to the fire preacher and it shall come to pass in the last days says God that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions your old men shall dream dreams and on my main servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days and they and the old shall prophesy so this means what it's a grave mistake that you you think that the Holy Spirit dwells in this stuff. So it's a grave mistake. And meanwhile, it is identical what the pagans do. So it is 100% pagan ritual. All right? So in addition to this, if we mention now what are the names of those altars, not the name of Yahweh, not the name of uh, even of Jesus now for example if there is altars in the New Testament when, uh, with, with this situation now it is uh, for the Archangel Michael so you worshiping uh, you worshiping uh, my uh, uh, angels uh, Saint Mary you worshiping Saint Mary uh, Saint George and his uh, his horse you worshiping him and his horse as well no problems all right so it's all idol worshiping if you tell me now it is and it is for the name of god but to put it for the name like the name of whatever to to honor them absolutely junk trash all right now last bit some one could say what about consecration in the old testament actually it used to be to the people and also to the metal stuff and wooden stuff like in the tabernacle, absolutely correct, not not wrong at all. But as we'll see now, first of all, consecration in the Old Testament meant this person or that thing is only to be used for the worship only, worship activity only. All right. And meanwhile, they never mentioned that the Holy Spirit dwells in this stuff. And by the way, as we'll see now this anointing oil they didn't like pray on it special prayer or they cook it five times that they do the myron and all that stuff no 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 no. it will come holy by as we read now by uh, a certain formula what's this formula not prayer and uh, uh, five times and get whatever and now it is the holy spirit is there now that's nothing to do with the spirit at all so let's read this in the book of uh, exodus chapter 3 moreover the Lord spoke to Moses saying also take for yourself quality spices and he gave him the name of the spices that he must get and also he gave him also what quantity of each spice to use and mix all these spices together and once you make them like that they became holy holy in the sense now you anoint the person that like to be a priest with this anointing oil, oil, uh, oil which means this person only will be dedicated to serving Yahweh 
Also, get all the utensils that is going to be used in the tabernacle and also anoint it with this holy oil. And this means what? Only these utensils will be used only for the purposes of the worshipping. All right? You cannot take it and use it for something else. All right? Not at all. And in, in fact, also you shouldn't even take it outside. All right? That it is only for that purpose. And no one can touch it except one of those people who are already also consecrated to serve uh, the Lord. But uh, uh, so, uh, so what's so special about this? See what the Lord actually uh, told Moses. And you shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil to me throughout your generation. It shall not be poured on man's flesh, but only for the consecrated black, uh, people. Listen to this one. Nor shall you make any of other like it. So you cannot at home use the same spices with the same quantities and use it at home. So when the Lord said, this formula is for me, then when you get these quantities of these particular spices, now this is, I would say, these ingredients are the holy oil that we make, we make this mix and only for the Lord. And those who are, I would say, segregated to worship, like to, uh, like to perform the rituals or the uh, uh, worship activities are the people only to be anointed with this. So, nor shall you make any of other like it according to its composition. It is holy and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it or whoever puts on any uh, of it on uh, an outsider shall be cut off from his, these people. So how do you know that this oil is holy oil? Only the amount of it, the, the composition of it. So when, when it comes to this sort of composition, this is holy one. No one can do this combination at home. All right. And this means that it is only used for the worship activity. Uh, we, we need to understand by the way the word holy or saint like, like in Hebrew and in the, in the olden days, it is like someone is actually uh, put aside for a special mission with uh, the worship thing. All right. So uh, what the uh, fire preacher said was definitely not true at all. Second point was definitely the consecration rituals, both in paganism and uh, the Orthodox Church is paganism. Number three. If you claim what happened in the Old Testament, the Old Testament was not actually saying that the Holy Spirit dwells in this person or the Holy Spirit dwells in this like uh, utensil or vessels that being used in uh, uh, the tabernacle. So the word holy actually is uh, something or someone that is for the Lord. All right. So of course, in the New Testament, we all are called uh, saints in the sense we already Having the Holy Spirit like dwell in us, but not Holy Spirit does not dwell in stones. This is the grave sin again is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to give us the new creation. Holy Spirit is in us because we are the new living stones of the new temple of the New Testament. This is from the uh, epistles of, of St. Peter, by the way. All right. I hope that this uh, episode makes sense to you. Share it with others. So even maybe 1% will his eyes opened and uh, give it a like if you think it's worth it and if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel please do and unless the Lord comes we'll meet again in another episode may the Lord bless you all